Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we're gonna take a look at reading in a spreadsheet of raw file and uh, just cleaning it and filtering out what we need. Now, I have done similar exercises in the past, for instance, for the, um, uh, uh, the climate change, uh, terrorism file, etc. But I have had uh, many of my students uh, ask me about this. Uh, I'm not sure if they're not watching those videos or maybe they're finding it too complex. I've also had other people have requested that I put together a, a video just for reading and uh, cleaning and filtering uh, a file. So we're going to do that here. This is going to be the military spending um, of, of the top 10 countries, top 10 nations in absolute dollar values. Let's go ahead and take a look at the file itself. So I'm going to bring in this file uh, and I didn't mean to open it up with numbers. Let me open it up with Excel here and bring it in. So you can see that this is a spreadsheet. This is a CSV file of the military spendings. And here I have a row that says data source world development indicator. That's where you can download this from. I will post all of this uh, in the GitHub uh, repositories, you can download everything from there. Just look for 039, reading raw data, and you're going to see the uh, the files there too. You can see that I have uh, one, two, three, four rows that are not necessary. It's the fifth row that we have the labels that start, and we have these years. And this goes all the way to 2022, 2023 being blank as of now. And it shows you the, the amount of money that the countries have spent. And this has all the countries in the world, plus you have some regions. So you might come across, for instance, European Union in there someplace. Um, there, there are regions in there, as you will see. Now, this could be, this is a CSV file. This could have just as well been an Excel file. As you can see, basically it looks the same thing. It's just that this is Excel. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I already have the code, which makes for a shorter video. <clears throat> We're going to import pandas library as PD and matplot, uh, matplotlib uh, pyplot as PLT, as I have done in the past. So I'm going to do a shift enter here to run those import commands. Now I want to set some display options here about how things are going to look on the display. First, we have this uh, pandas uh, set option for notebook represent as HTML, which you've seen me do before. This basically displays pandas data frames as HTML tables, which is kind of handy. We're going to set the display precision for the numerical data to two decimal places. And uh, for floating point numbers, we're going to also format them as uh, with two decimal places. Uh, using Python string formatting. So that's what this does. So let's do a shift enter here to set those standards. And now we're going to load in the data. As we read in the data, uh, we're going to assign that to a variable M, which is going to be our data frame. So the pandas read CSV is going to request a CSV file. And notice we're skipping the first four rows because as you recall, there was really nothing useful in there for us. So I'm going to do a shift enter here. And uh, you know what? I am going to insert a cell above this. And I'm going to take a look at M dot head, the first four or uh, five rows here. So as you can see it brought in this data frames and we can see Aruba, Africa, Eastern and Southern Afghanistan. You can see there are regions here. Great. Now, if this was an Excel file, if this was an Excel file and you change this to read pd.readexcel skip rows for you probably get an error in Jupyter and it's going to tell you that you need to install this XLRD dependency. So that's what this is. This is the exclamation point bip install XLRD, which I really don't need here and I've already installed it. But um, if you need to, you can install that and then you can load the data as opposed to it being a CSV, you can read it as an Excel file, which is not what I need to do right here because I've already read it in as um, a CSV. Let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the columns that this data frame has. Now the print statement is optional. I could have just said m.columns, but this is kind of nicer. You can see that we have the columns that we saw earlier. And let me just bring that in just so we have a comparison 
and I double clicked again let me right click and open with Excel and um, you can clearly see that we have country name uh, country code indicator name indicator code and then we have the years and these are all of our column names so very very convenient so uh, having done that let's take a look at finding the top 10 military spenders from 2017 to 2022 having looked at this spreadsheet we know that 2022 was the last year that we had data for. So this is gonna give us the last five years as far as this data set is concerned. First, what we're going to do is to create a new data frame called military total. And this is going to take the military data frame, which we read in and we call the group by to group based on country name right here, and then sum that. So we're gonna see all of these values being summed up. To calculate a total military spending for each of them, we can create, uh, we can take this military total and add a total column to it. So this is gonna add a new column called total that's gonna go at the very end. And we're going to sum over these values from 2017 to 2022. Lastly, what we're going to do is we're gonna call the uh, end largest, which is a form of sorting, if you will, and we want the top 50 countries in the total values uh, to to uh, you know be shown up. And we're gonna that's that's a new data frame called top 10 countries, and this is going to print those top 50 values. Let's go ahead and do this so we can see what this has done. So you can see that it summed up all these values. And if you take a look, for instance, you can see that of course the world is the biggest one. But then there's North America, United States, the first country that shows up uh, with this staggering uh, spending on military. I believe that's trillion that we're looking at. I'm pretty sure that's a trill in the trillion. So 4.6 trillion uh, between 2017 and 2022, including both of those years that has been spent. Now, what this is done, this is returned 50 uh, countries for us. We could take a look at this, or we could pick our own countries, of course, but looking at this, we can see there's the United States, you know, a little further down, we see China, a little bit further down, we see India, Saudi Arabia, Russian Federation, France, Germany, Japan, uh, Korea, uh, you know, Italy, Australia, Canada. So we can see these countries that are showing up. What I like to do is I want to pick 10 of these countries, having looked at the, uh, the list, and here's a, a, a list uh, that's been put together with the United States, China, India, etc. cetera. Uh, the backslash is because I'm extending the list to a second line so I don't get a Python error. And then I'm going to create a years variable, which is going to be just the list of, um, you know, the numerical list from 2017 to 2023. Uh, let's uh, take a look at just uh, that list. We know what this one looks like. If we were to print that, we're just going to get the same thing back. So having done this, I am going to now filter the rows for the top countries. Now remember that the M was the, all the countries that we read in. So we're gonna take the country name. So I'm gonna call M country name. So that's going to be for those countries. And I'm gonna say that this is in the top countries list that I want. And I'm going to have a new uh, data frame created by uh, having just these 10 countries in it and it's being called military okay and then if i take military and uh, uh, basically pick the years that i want which is the string years this is converting year to the string this is a comp uh, uh, comprehension here four year in years the list that we created so we're going to loop through these years and we're going to get the country names um, uh, the military country names for those years only and reassign it back to military. And this is what military will look like. You can see that it uh, filtered out from the large data set that we had, it filtered out only the countries that we wanted to have in this list that we created. It's only one issue here that these are not in order of spending. They're just showing up right here as, uh, you know, uh, Panda's own um, uh, sorting, which is uh, alphabetical. So let's put them in alphabetical order. And what we're interested in finding out to be in uh, value and as far as how much money they've been spending. 
So there are two ways of doing that. I put an option. Well, there's more than two ways, but here are two options here. Option one, we can re-index it to match the top countries in descending order. We could say set index country name. So this, uh, be this becomes the index at that point. So we're letting the country name being the index as opposed to the index that pandas has. Um, and we're going to basically uh, uh, do that and by, by saying index it by country name, locate these top, these top countries, and then reset the index. So if I do this, take a look at what happens. That now this is uh, the country name. And because we said reset index, instead of having those numerical values that are in the original data frame, the index was reset to starting at zero again. So that's one option. You could do it that way. Or you could do it this way. So you could say um, military.resetindex drop equals true in place equals true, and then do it this way, but I'm not going to bother with that one. We've already seen this, but let's take a look at it one more time so we can see the top 10 countries here. So I want to now see the data for these top 10 military spending in form a tabular format, which I have here already. But what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a little PNG, a portable network graphic that we can save offline. It's fairly straightforward. We're going to call the PLT for matplotlib. And the figure size is going to be 12.6. If you remember that this is the, 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 the width and this is the height, so it's going to be kind of a, it's going to be basically what we want. We want it to be wider, uh, kind of wide and not so tall. That's what we're after. Hide the axis. We're not interested in seeing the axes. And um, uh, a little bit about how I want this to appear. I want it to appear in the center. And then I can take my plot and save this as a PNG. And this is the dots per inch resolution. And I'm going to make it be tight and add a little bit of padding around it. And we can say to show this. Let's do that. And you can see this is what it looks like. Now, it created this on my desktop. I'm going to just uh, bring it and drag it in just to show you. And I'm sorry, it's a little bit large when preview opens it. But you can see that this was created as a file on my desktop with that name, top10military.png. I just want you to see that. Having created that, let's go ahead and create a graph that shows the military spending for these countries. Okay, So here's a def plot military spending. We pass to it a data frame. This is a data frame, uh, which I'm calling military. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get the country. So I'm going to take the military country name and get the unique values. And these are going to be unique to begin with. So not to worry about that, but just in case that was not the case, you get the unique values for the countries. We're going to reorder countries to match the top 10 countries list. So country for country in the top 10 countries, uh, we're going to, this is a comprehension that's going to create that uh, uh, list for us. And then as before, we're going to set the plot parameters Figure size is going to be 12.8 again. So this is going to be kind of wide. Uh, it's, going to st it's still going to be uh, wider than it is taller, but not quite the one it was 12 and 6, a little bit taller. I'm going to loop through uh, the, uh, the countries and uh, plot these uh, countries, as you can see, as we have a matching country from 2017 to 2022. We're going to plot those values. Now we're going to divide these values by this uh, so it's a little bit more manageable to see the values on the screen. It makes it nicer. And the label is going to be just a country uh, label for, for the plot. Adding some uh, titles. You know, the title is going to be showing up for the graph. This is a nice title. Uh, we're going to have the X label be year and the Y label be the military spending, indicating it is in billions because we are dividing over here. So we wanted to know that those values are not, you know, it's not like $500, but it's $500 billion, let's say. Uh, adding a legend, as uh, you can see, and then uh, setting some ticks. So we have some tick marks for these particular years, so it makes it look pretty. Now, these are all optional. You don't need to put these, but it makes it look a little bit nicer. I don't want to see the grid in the background. Sometimes it displays it by default, and I don't want to have any uh, margins. 
Finally, I could, as this will be displayed here, I could again save this as a PNG by using the same save fig command and save that in my default directory, which is right now my desktop. And of course, we want to display this. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, this will not do anything for us. This just creates the function. And um, let me bring up this. We're going to call the military spending and we're going to pass to it our military data frame. Let's take a look at that. And there it is. It created this for us. Let's take a look. We can clearly see that the numbers that are showing up are not, you know, they don't have little E symbols in them. And we have our little label that says it is in billions of US dollars. We can see our legend. We can see the little tick marks. We can clearly see that the United States <clears throat> between 2017 and 2022 has been the biggest spender and uh, other countries are you know uh, far behind china's in a distant second now of course it would be nice if we create another data frame to indicate what would the world be without the united states so i'll leave that for you guys it's fairly easy to do you just have to you remember to create a new um, uh, data frame uh, a list without the US in it, and then more or less the same thing. So you can use the same function to pass that into us. So you can say military without the US as your data frame, and it's going to plot it, plot it without the United States. And you can see that these countries become obviously very close to each other. It's a little bit clear as what's going on. Right now, it looks like they're all flat, which is not the case, by the way. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope it was useful. I am going to provide all the files on GitHub. Uh, if you enjoyed these videos, please share with the loved ones and uh, you know put the word out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.